today we will just uh, look at recent technology I would not uh, say new technology because this uh, application of uh, geosynthetics has been in vogue for several uh, years particularly in the field of highway engineering and geotechnical engineering. Recently it has also found its application in the field of coastal engineering. So let us uh, try to see the basics of geosynthetics and then later I will try to tell you about uh, its application the different versions of uh, geosynthetic products and then we will start looking at its uh, application mostly pertaining to the field of coastal engineering. Herein there has been a number of uh, case studies that have been presented and I would uh, like to place on record my sincere thanks to several organizations, industries, manufacturers of geosynthetic products and institutes like CWPRS Pune who has who have allowed me to take some of their slides informations in order to go ahead with this presentation on geosynthetics and its applications in the field of coastal engineering. Overview, I will try to start with the introduction, the role of geosynthetics, I mean the geosynthetic products, then its application the field to the field of coastal engineering followed by a few case studies. And I will also cover some of the tests carried out in IIT Madras. Let me start with the definition. This definition clarifies in brief what exactly is geosynthetics. The, a generic term describing a product at least one of whose components is made of made from synthetic or natural polymer in the form of a sheet, a strip or a three dimensional structure used in contact with soil and or with other materials in the field of geotechnical engineering or for that matter any other field of civil engineering. In fact, it is got started in the field of civil engineering particularly in the division of geotechnical and transportation engineering. Later it, it found its application in the field of hydraulic engineering and finally we have our field of specialization that is in the field of coastal engineering the application of the geosynthetic products. So that is the definition in general that it is made of made from synthetic and natural polymer. So it can be strips or sheets etc. The different types of products that are available at our disposal will also be discussed. A broader classification of uh, geosynthetics are as you can see here you can have either permeable or essentially per impermeable. Under permeable you have further two classified products one is geotextiles, geotextiles mostly it is just a sheet or geotextile related products as you can see here you have under permeable you have geotextiles and geotextile related products. 
whereas under essentially impermeable you we have a geosynthetic cleanliness and geo membranes. When you come at come with the look at the geo textiles you have a three types of a geosynthetic I mean geo textiles one is oven, non oven and knitted. Under geo textile related products, we have uh, six types of uh, products. One is the geo grids, then you have the geo nets, geo cells, geo strips, geo mats, and geo spaces. Some of them they are not wide that uh, popular in the field of coastal engineering. So, these are general classifications of geosynthetics. So, again uh, going to the geo membranes you have either polymeric or bituminous and then all these things combined I, they are called as geo composites. Maybe geo textiles and geo textile related products can be combined together or geo synthetic clay liners or can be combined with geo textile products. So, any of these classification or the sub classifications combined together the product is termed as geo composites. Functions of geo synthetic products. We have a several role or functions of these geosynthetic products. One is filtration, then drainage, separation, reinforcement, packing, protection, erosion control which is the most important aspect or the function in the field of coastal engineering and then finally, Ceiling. So, you see a variety of functions <coughs> of uh, geosynthetic products. Now, this is further explained here concerning the I mean the role of geosynthetics. The filtration as you can see here the retention of soil or other particles subjected to hydrodynamic forces while allowing the passage of fluids into or across a geo textile or a geo textile product related product. That is it acts like a filter what it does is it filters the sand and allows the water to go. So, for that matter if you have something like a sloping wall and you have the waves coming, in case you do not have this geo textile product and then you are trying to protect this with small filter and then armor layer which is consisting of bigger stones. This filter layer there assume that there is no no geotextile it is only it is supported on sand. What will happen due to the percolation the water will remove the sand. So, that is going to create pockets of cover and if the percolation is more more so in the case of uh, during storm or extreme events what will happen is you might have also have the over topping and removal of uh, sand from this end and so what will happen this will be removed. So, in order to avoid that you have a geo textile over which you can have uh, the filter layer and then maybe your stones 
Now, make sure that the geotextile runs over the bed of sand or loose soil, so that it is and it has to be properly anchored, so that this whole thing is protected and it allows only the water to penetrate and the sand will be retained. So, in that way geo textile is very very important when you are dealing with protections with protections of course. Then drainage collecting and transportation transporting of precipitation that is ground water or other fluids in a plane of a geotextile or geotextile related product. So, this is just the collecting and then transporting of either precipitation or ground water. So, that of definition itself is more or less clear. Then you have the separation, separation is the preventing from this is nothing to prevent from intermixing of adjacent dissimilar soils or fill material by the use of a geotextile or so what you can do have is you have a you can have a, a geotextile between two different material and avoid mixing up of these two materials. So, particularly when you want to say for example, uh, uh, you, you want to have uh, some kind of uh, pebbles and then small pebbles and then sand, very small pebbles and sand and you do not want them to get mixed up. So, you can have this kind of material like uh, your geotextile material that will help or function as the role of separator. Then use of then reinforcement, use of stress strain behavior of geotextile or geo related product to improve the mechanical properties of soil or other construction material. So, later we will see some of these application uh, during the course of the lecture. Finally, we have the erosion control, the use of geotextile for preventing soil or other particles at the surface say over a slope and this is what I had been explaining just now. So, that is where you have five, you have a, a wide application I mean it is very commonly adopted uh, the geotextile is very commonly adopted. So, some of the details are available available in this code which gives a, a complete description of a, the a type of material that has to be used the classification of geosynthetic products etcetera. So, then uh, we, we, as I said earlier the geotextiles are classified as oven, non oven and knitted. So, in the case of oven geotextiles, these are produced by interlacing usually at right angles, two or more sets of yarn, fibers, tapes or any other kind of elements that are basically geosynthetic of a geosynthetic type and these are preferred I mean the oven type of a geotextiles are preferred where when high tensile strengths are required. So, a typical figure typical uh, 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 picture of oven geotextile is shown on the right side. Non oven type a geotextile made of directionally or randomly oriented fibers, filaments or other elements mechanically or thermally or by through hydration bonded, it is all bonded together. What are all bonded together? Oriented fibers that is the fibers are randomly oriented and so whereas the other one it is not randomly oriented, here it is randomly oriented that is the basic one of the basic difference between oven and the non oven and 
preferred at locations where when uh, you need higher elongation, elongations. So, in such cases you prefer non oven type of jo textiles. Knitted, these are produced by interloping one or more, more yarns, fibers, filaments or other materials. More appropriate when uh, tensile forces have to be absorbed. So, it gives us a kind of a broader uh, picture like when you need to go for oven, non oven and knitted type of geotextiles, but then there are several other criteria which decide on the type what which, which is which, which of the three would be would have to be considered. So, I suggest a, a detailed uh, look into references. And uh, one uh, I think uh, I, will, I will give the reference later. So, at the end of the lecture there is one uh, uh, book by Geosynthetics uh, by Pilarisk who has done uh, uh, um, uh, a considerable amount of work on this geosynthetic uh, products and its application and I suggest if some of you are interested you read that book, it is quite thick voluminous and uh, it gives a lot of information and uh, I, I mean uh, further classification of oven. For example, what is what is the exact difference between oven, non oven all these products, when exactly because this only gives you a broader idea. Okay. Now, geocomposite, geocomposite is uh, again another material as I have already told this are manufactured assembled material using at least one geosynthetic product among its components. You can have two or more than one add together to get a geosynthetic composite. So, geotextile related products, you have geogrids, geonets, geocells as well as geomats. Geogrids are mostly used for reinforce, reinforcing the slopes and uh, the role of geocells and geonets are also similar to geonets, uh, geogrids, but geogrids are more uh, stronger if you want to have a, a, a real control of uh, the slope uh, sliding over then uh, I think uh, geogrids can uh, be better. Geomats are adopted mostly when you want to have a uh, 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 the protection done and over it you want to have plantation, then geomat is good. For example, uh, this is uh, uh, we always talk about plantation particularly after the tsunami, we talk always about the plantation being a, a good uh, a buffer against reduction of uh, 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 the run up etcetera. So, one of the concept may be something like uh, you have a you have the slope you have already protected using a geotextile and then maybe here you can have a, a kind of a mat, geomat over which the growth of a, a, a plants can take place. So, this itself can have the plants, so you can have the geomat. So, that is one application, but there are several other, uh, other applications, so you need to refer into some of the references. Next geopipes. Geopipes are perforated, it can be perforated or solid pipes of poly, polymeric uh, pipes used for draining liquids or gases including uh, the leachate or gas collection in landfill applications. In some cases, these pipes are also wrapped. So, you have a pipe, it is also wrapped over a geotextile. High density HDPE or PVC or PP or PB are some of the products material that is being used for manufacturing these uh, geo pipes. It has been widely adopted in the field of uh, civil engineering including highways, railway edge drains, 
interceptor drains and leachate removal systems. But its application among this is significant in the field of highways and railways. Some of these products are shown below and so how it looks like. So, these are uh, uh, geopipes. Geoforms, geoforms are directly it is not having much of application in the field of coastal engineering. So far uh, there has not been much of work which has been uh, where they have adopted geoforms uh, uh, in coastal engineering, but I do not think uh, uh, I do not see that uh, its application may not be there. There should be some uh, application but not much available in the literature. So, geoforms are blocks or slabs that are created by expansion of polystyrene foam to form low density network of closed gas filled cells. So, it is quite light you look at the size of a geoform. So, it is just it looks massive, but it is being carried here by two persons and two persons not for the weight it is probably because of the volume because volume has to be taken care of. So, the geoform is used for thermal insulation as a light weight fill or as a compressible vertical layer to reduce earth pressures against rigid walls. So, now you when you say uh, reduce earth pressures against a rigid wall now you see there is a kind of application for the coastal engineering. For example, if you have <coughs> bulkheads, bulkheads what are the purpose of bulkheads look at the lecture which I have uh, already given. So, bulkheads on one side its main purpose is to retain the earth, uh, earth and on the other side with the secondary purpose to protect it against waves. So, in the case of a bulkhead this can uh, be is easily are adopted. So, typical applications of geoform include within soil embankment built over soft weak soils, under roads, airfield payments, railway track systems subjected to excessive fees, uh, freeze thaw conditions and finally, beneath the on grid storage tanks that contain cold liquids. So, these are all some of the applications where you can think of I mean uh, these are the applicable some uh, uh, applications for the uh, <coughs> geoform. So, again geotextile forms when you look at geotextile form you have basically for the application in the marine environment we have geotextile bags, geotextile tubes then we have geotextile containers. All these are widely used and it is also quite uh, not so difficult to handle, but many times you need uh, skilled labor to adopt uh, this uh, material. Selection of material is extremely important. There are several manufacturers with a wide range of specifications for the geosynthetic material. So, before we order or before we plan for it the selection of proper material is of a paramount importance. You need to look at the specifications what are the standard specifications for the material and once you obtain the standard specifications, then go in for the standard tests to fulfill all those specifications and then finally, select the manufacturer. So, as I said we have geosynthetic uh, geotextile bags as you can see on the right side, these are looking like cement bags. So, these look like cement bags, bags that are filled with sand. Then geotextile tubes, these are long tubes, maybe about 
10 to 20 meters or even longer. You have a pump to pump in the mixture of sand as well as water into the tube. The water will come out that is the principle of your jute textile, but the sand will be retained. Depending on the size of the pipe or size of the tube, make sure that you have that kind of quantity of sand, because availability of sand is another very important issue in the application of geotextile tube for coastal protection or any field of any, any problem related to coastal engineering. Later you will see that, you will see a lot of green pictures on geotubes. But one important point as I said earlier is the availability of sand. So, in a location for example, if you have a an estuary and you have some kind of a sandbar formation here and you want to construct a training wall, assess what is the kind of a sand you have, nature of sand, quality of sand plus even inside the estuary, you can go into the estuary because a deepening of the estuary is always a good. Assess the quantity of sand or if you cannot remove the sand, you need to go into the offshore, but make sure the environmental impact when you by dredging sand, you should not create some problems for the environment. And then one of the solution may be you are having a, a pair of training wall and now re replace this training wall with two geotubes. Geotube is nothing but a tube, but it needs sand. So, that sand anyway you have to dredge this, a dredge and normally you throw it in the offshore. So, you dredge this, fill the tube and these are the areas where this can be adopted or if you consider a port for example. When you have a port and if you have the sediment transport taking place like this, you know that the sand will form here and if you allow the sand to go, then it will bypass and maybe it settles into your approach channel. This is the usual problem. So, in that case on the down drift side you may have erosion taking place and this area needs to be protected. This is a straightforward location where you can think of using geotube. Again, you need to consider the distance, but still it may be worth because getting the sand from somewhere else is going to be very difficult. Now, in this case, I am talking about a, a port. Then what will happen? You can transfer this sand to this side and have your geotubes installed. So, so this uh, source of sand is one uh, big question to be clarified 100 percent before you get started with such kind of projects. Then uh, you have a uh, geo containers which will again be sausages, all these things look like sausages. So, this can be dumped offshore geo containers and I will uh, come back to the geo containers with the help of one of the project that has been executed later. So, this is a typical picture of a geo bag being lifted after it has been filled with sand. 
the geo bags can be of different sizes. See, after all, the geo bags are made of geo textile, so it is a sheet. So you can build your own bags according to your own sizes. So. <coughs> The concept of using these geo bags came from the simple, uh, a simple something like thumb rule. No? So, so, in the case of a flood, what is the immediate solution they think of? You would have heard say in the case of flood, what will they do? They will dump sandbags, sandbags are dumped as a, a first a uh, protection. So, that will give some amount of relief, because it will retain the earth from further collapse and it will reduce the, it will act as a barrier for the flow of the water and that is where from sandbags only all these things have come up. So, geo composites I have already explained it is a combination of a number of uh, uh, geo synthetic products uh, as uh, uh, the, I mean the geo synthetic textile, geo textile or geo net etcetera. I have, I have explained here the different kinds of uh, uh, materials uh, products that can be combined together to form as geo uh, <coughs> composites. So, you can also have a kind of a plastic drainage core and surrounded by geo textile filter. So, you have a pipe, so the application of geo textile is wrap it over the pipe, so that it offers an additional protection for the pipe. I will further continue with the geo synthetic clay, uh, clay liner. These include a thin layer of finely grounded pentonite clay. When, when you wet, when it is exposed to wetness, the clay swells and becomes very effective hydraulic barrier. So, the clay liner will just stand like this. They are manufactured by sandwiching the bentonite within a or layering it on geotextiles either with the geotextiles uh, in combination with the geo membranes or separately with geo membranes or bonding uh, the layers by needling, stitching or chemical adhesives. So, only thing is make sure that you have the bonding taking place within uh, the different kinds of material that uh, products which we are uh, uh, which are available like products means geotextiles or geo membranes etcetera. So, geosynthetic layers as we see here are very effective hydraulic barrier and it has been widely adopted in dam engineering or river engineering etcetera. Okay. So, now coming to engineering applications as I have been telling now and then about its applications while going through the introduction itself. You see that broadly it can be adopted in the fields listed here, coastal and beach protection, river training I already gave you a small example, bed or and, and or bank protection, scour protection that is very important land reclamation that is a major uh, major field of engineering particularly in islands then finally coffer dams so these are all the engineering applications wherein you have the application of the geosynthetic products geosynthetic geotextiles in coastal protection. Look at suppose 
we have a, a dune this is the dune what are the products used where that is what is illustrated in this picture so these are all the different levels which are of course important when you are talking in terms of coastal protection so you see that if in case you are thinking of groins or sea wall so you can adopt bags or geotextile against as a geotextile as a leveling layer against erosion here so you can have geo bags either for groins or for this for the uh, protection of the coast when you talk about uh, the revetment underneath the revetment in between the sand and the stones you use the filter so this is the filter below the open revetment can be a geosynthetic products like the geotextile then here c is for use of geotextile to level the surface not only to level the surface to also prevent escape of sand if you don't have that geosynthetic material geotextile then you can also experience some unevenness also so this compensate for the unevenness once it is laid and another thing i would like to point out here is when the geosynthetic products is completely submerged in the water you don't have much of any problems later you will see the problem if it is exposed to sunlight for on a continuous basis so again you see here in the case of normal revetment this in the case of a dune revetment this normal revetment again in in the case of a dike this is sand dune and this is a normal dike so in a dike you see that you have filter below the revetment and you also have the toe protection wherein the geotextiles can be used and in fact you do if you experience or if you anticipate some, some amount of overtopping they also think of having a, a geotextile running all over because in the event of flooding if this is a, having a geotextile beneath this that will protect to some extent otherwise the sand over it will get washed off as i have said earlier so here in you see that cover protection is taking place you can either use the geotextile and you are in fact uh, there is one more uh, addition to this which is not uh, taken into account one thing is here you see the cover taking place here either you can have a geotextile over which we can have gabions gabions is also coming under geosynthetic products because gabion i have already explained to you these are all uh, something like nets you have something like cube so you put smaller size stones and make it as a flexible stone so the, uh, this is uh, in areas where you don't have big size rocks so this is preferred so here in for this also you can think of uh, having gabions for the sea wall uh, for all for all this uh, maybe for the grinds also you can think of having gabions so you see that this picture explains to you to certain extent the application of geosynthetic textiles or geosynthetic uh, uh, geotextiles in a broader sense when i say geosynthetic geotextile that means in that includes the, the geotube and uh, uh, geobags because the material used is nothing but the geotextile use of geosynthetics what it should reduce or, or withstand waves loads that are coming are waves and current forces may give rise to through flow and abrasion loads on geotextile for which it has to be designed for 
loads due to seepage flow, seepage and erosion are interrelated. So, erosion and sedimentation effects all these things have to be considered when you are planning for geosynthetics in the field of coastal engineering. This is very important. Assume that you have finalized uh, your geosynthetic uh, uh, geotextile. You have fulfilled all the requirements as far as specification is concerned. And you have been uh, provided the best possible geotextile by the manufacturer, but still there are after having completed that part of the work, it does not stop. It needs periodical inspection during the construction. It should be the geotextile should be free from wrinkles and folds, but free from but not stretched. So, it is nothing but you keep a material under some folding condition. After some time, what happens? After some times it gets brittle and then it can even tear off. So, it should be clear without any wrinkle and there should not be any folds properly terminated. So, when you have the geotextile it should be only like this, it should be placed on the sand. So, it is not it is no joke. So, you have a beach where you can have a lot of unevenness, but still you have to make sure that the sheet is straight like this and along the along this direction also it has to be wrinkle free. Properly terminate fabric prevent undermining. So, this is a big uh, uh, very important thing when you are taking the because only for a certain stretch of the course you may be planning at the ends it has to be properly anchored not only at the ends over the slope also over the top slope top and this is the for example so it has to be properly anchored here so usually you will have a you will have a toe, it should not be left like this, it is preferably to take the geotextile further down and anchor it properly. The other way of doing it is sometimes it is also taken like this and again on the land side it has to be properly anchored. Overlying gravel layers must be permeable this clear avoid puncturing this is very common during installation of geotextiles. So, which means before you lay the geotextile a kind of a ground preparation is needed you should make sure that not, there are not many sharp corners etcetera. So, otherwise it will puncture. Once it punctures it is almost like not having the geotextile there. Overlapping of geotextiles. So, the width of the geotextile may be like this, this much may be 30 meters or 20 meters and you are going to protect a coast of length about 1 kilometer. So, you cannot get a roll with 1 kilometer length right. So, the widths may be up of 20 meters. So, the next piece will come 
this is one piece and you have another piece this is your overlapping this is a vulnerable location wherein enough care should be taken care of. So, the overlapping should be carefully designed. So, a minimum of 1 meter at least half a meter is very essential. No gaps between members for example, geotubes. Later you will see that geotubes can be used as sea wall also. I will not go into the sea wall aspect. Now, again let us get back to the training wall. I want to have a, a training wall with geotube and uh, when I calculate the length, the length comes to say 100 meters and you have only about 30 meters length geotube. So, you install one geotube here and then uh, the geotube is something like this. So, this is the joint geotube these two are butting against each other, but there is a weak point here. If this is not taken care of, you can have excessive flow here because the area is very small. The velocities can be higher and then this can give way for the entire structure. So, this is more vulnerable in the case of just you look at the slope. I have two geotubes. So, geotube, I will tell you what is meant by geotube again. So, you assume that there are two geotubes and this is joint, and here they are butting against each other. And this of course, I am talking over a, a slope and then the wave is coming. During an extreme event what happens? The wave will go over the slope and during the down rush, the velocity will be very high. So, this will create a cavity here, settlement, then collapse of the duty. So, this is very, very important when you are planning a using this uh, geotextiles uh, and uh, so that has to be uh, done when you are uh, that has to be taken care when the installation is in progress. So, this essentially needs a continuous and dedicated supervision and of course, skilled labor and the required machinery it is very, very important. Because see, uh, in spite of, of all this, what we are going to get is eco friendly protection measures. Because we are not getting, we are now getting rid of the stones which are like which are something like ISO. But when you want to achieve this kind of uh, eco friendly, the preparation takes more time, which needs more dedication. So, if that is done, then the application of geosynthetics as you have seen is quite good. Okay. This uh, video clip shows the installation of uh, geo bags.
see now we will move on to coastal engineering. So, the different kinds of measures or structures wherein you apply the geosynthetic products are one is in terms of groins, then for coastal protection or sand dune protection, revetments, offshore breakwaters, artificial reefs, shoreline structures, sea walls, dikes, bank protection in the case of uh, rivers, also cliff protection. So, you see there are a number of look a number of fields wherein the geosynthetic products can be adopted. The mostly wide widely adopted is geotextile tubes or it is called as geotubes. As I said earlier I have already introduced you to a geotube. These are tubular containers formed in situ on land or in water, both are possible. The diameters can vary from 1 to 10 meters, 10 meters is not that common, maybe diameters 1 to 3 meters are more common. Hydraulically filled with sand, silty sand for hydraulic applications or fine fills. So, as I said earlier, you have a tube, you fill with the both sand and water, the water comes out and the sand occupies the tube and then it takes the shape of a sausage. Normally filled to maximum density and volume of volume for hydraulic applications. Mass gravity structures for hydraulic applications, good geometrical tolerances. Although you say that it is a circular tube, after filling the whole thing and then place it on the in situ, then you will see that it becomes a kind of a sausage it will look like a kind of an ellipse. Large surface contact area with contained fill. Some of these aspects we will have a look at. The basic features of in adopting a geotube. This is the, the geotube. The length may be as I said up to about maybe 10 meters, 20 meters or 30 meters. So, you keep filling, you may have a 2 or 3 holes also pumping points wherein you pump the sand and then slowly the tube gets elongated and after some time once you have done it full extent, it will form as, as I said a solid unit and hence it can be retained. So, here you see a geotube being filled in presence of water. The same geotube can be placed over land and filled. For example, along a beach which is getting eroded somewhere here you can have the geotube and then supply the sand and mixed water into this. So, this elongates. So, here you see that this is being this process is being done inside the ocean or in the lake. So, at least you have the water. You normally have a geotube when you have in the marine environment that is near the seabed. All of us know that when you have a geos material, 
geotube or any any kind of obstruction the contact between the obstruction and the sea floor is vulnerable for scour so in order to avoid the scour you need to spread the geotextile on either side and also properly anchor it so that it acts as a a toe so this is uh, in site where the sand is uh, being prepared and then uh, it is uh, sent to for sent for filling up of the so filling of geotubes with dredge spoil after its alignment the filling is usually with a mixture containing approximately 2 to 5% of sand so the water will come out as i said earlier i also mentioned that we call it as a tube it is circular but after filling you look at the shape it takes so it takes something like the shape of an ellipse and you can now this looks like a solid obstruction for any and it can resist forces due to waves or currents equipment used include barges tug boats dredges mixing tanks in fact settling tanks also sometimes they we need water tanks pumps and cranes more important is skilled labor many projects fail because of non available of availability of skilled laborers total amount of sand required to fill a geotube up to a height of 2.8 meters is estimated to be approximately 1000 meter cube on an average total filling time of a geotube is 8 to 10 hours these are all only qualitative so it depends on size it depends on so many other factors etc application of geotubes as we have seen in the basic course on the phenomena of longshore sediment transport and longshore currents structure placed in the flow path decreases the energy as we have already seen result is decrease the turbulence near the seabed less sediment in suspension and reduce longshore sand transport due to all these features you can have the grinds at regular interval not regular intervals at intervals a number of grinds jetting into the ocean is referred to as a grind field now when we have something like this instead of you usually you have seen the grinds made of it's usually a core layer sometimes you have a this is the primary layer this is the secondary layer and then you have the core layer something like this you will have and this is going to run normal to the shore so this is of course you need to keep on maintaining on a regular basis because the stones can get dislodged uh, so you need to replenish this at regular intervals now this looks like an eyesore it's not so good aesthetically it's not good so aesthetically what you see on the board on the screen looks more appealing structurally it is performing the function of that of a grind after all for grind what you need you need only a obstruction and that obstruction is achieved by having a, a geotube 
So, this is somewhere in uh, uh, US where they have protected the uh, uh, groin, uh, uh, protected the coast using a jet tube. Is that clear? So, you can also use geo bags instead of geo tube for construction of groins. So, only thing is enough care should be taken to make sure that the stability of the geo bags is ensured. In picture it looks very nice, in reality if you have a, a extreme storm you know that a single back can look like a pebble for the mighty waves. So, there should be some kind of a interlocking connections etcetera to be established or sometimes it, this uh, will be used as core of the that is inside the you I, I just now said uh, uh, you have the core. So, for this you can use the geo bags that is you save so much of material by using this geo bags. Okay. Here in SUV for application for revetments. So, look at the revetments now. So, this is the geo tube you see here and this is what in picture it shows. This is local soil fill it is standing there it has been installed and now you also have an apron, apron which is very important and the apron is anchored by scour protection. So, this will make sure that you do not have the loss of sand taking place because this is going to act as a filter medium. So, hence because of this process you see the kind of protection measure you have here. So, artificial or reefs or offshore breakwaters. Offshore breakwaters we have already seen, offshore detached breakwaters can serve as coastal protection measure that is one application. Then artificial reefs, what is meant by artificial reefs? These artificial reefs can be submerged at a distance certain distance from <coughs> the shoreline. So, these artificial uh, reefs will enhance premature breaking thereby you can have a, a beach in front of in between the shoreline and the artificial reef. Sometimes this uh, orientation of the artificial reefs can be adjusted in such a way you have a focusing breaking waves in between them and the shoreline. So, thus enhancing the surfing and other uh, uh, I mean uh, other kinds of activities recreation activities near the beach. So, it finds an application in the case of tourism also the jet synthetic tube. For protecting an existing development or a structure there may be an existing structure may be a monument which needs to be protected at any cost. So, remember when I took the coastal protection measure earlier under one of the case study I showed you the protecting of Mahabalipuram temple. So, wherein uh, the temple was here around the shore and uh, it need to be protected. So, it was protected by stones that is this is in section and in plan if this is the temple and all around 
the stones were dumped and this is the ocean. So, this is the temple. So, what happened in this case? This has become a kind of an it is not so aesthetic and it looks like a very massive structure when it is being used for protecting a single temple. Whereas, if you think of a geotextile, textile probably if all other conditions being satisfied this could serve as a better proposition. I said if all other conditions being satisfied. So, we need to explore the possibility for such kind of protecting such kind of structures. So, now you see that again in this case as we have seen the, the two protection measures these are all small geotubes can be standing there over the apron as anchor as well as protecting the coast or uh, protecting the main uh, uh, geotube. So, here again the same thing here it is completely submerged and now this will be protected. So, here in this case this looks this is emerging type. Okay. But you can also have a submerged type. If you have a submerged type, then what will happen? So, the structure is here. So, I am having a submerged reef, maybe maybe two, two or three uh, geotubes, maybe two geotubes then what will happen the wave will break here and the sand will deposit here. So, this may be a much better proposition compared to that kind of a situation because here in the geosynthetic geotube is completely submerged in water. Later you will see that UV ultraviolet trace is one biggest problem in dealing with geosynthetic materials. For a tropical for tropical countries when you have a something like submerged totally submerged then it may not have a much of a problem compared to if this is exposed then you will have problems. But in this case what has been done is after having the geotube, tube the whole thing is filled with sand, but when you have the sand this again sometimes becomes a problem because there can be erosion of the sand itself. Okay. So, when you see there are situations where by trying to protect one structure you build another structure and ultimately both the structures will be lost. So, you need to be very careful in finalizing the design. So, herein you see a geotube, a geotube is here this is the coast and this is serving as a kind of a sea wall and you have here it can be containment dikes wherein you can have the geotextile tube as the core and then over it you have to you can have the stones. This is only for saving the material, but then from aesthetic point of view you are not really solving that problem because still it is going to be stones when you go in for this kind of a uh, design.
So, again this is for the uh, groins the details how the groin should be there it should have uh, the most important thing is this is most important thing apart from this this has to be taken care. The same thing what I have uh, shown you earlier when you are dealing with this kind of a geotube with stone on top make sure that you have run make sure that you run a geotank style over this. So, you see that red color that is the geotextile layer. A number of geotubes or number of geotubes can be formed as a huge case as you can see here. This, this was a concept that was adopted in Ecuador. So, geotubes being used as jetties. So, this is a, this figure shows how the geotube is placed and then in order to protect the geotubes then you have a you have the stones dumping of stones is in progress in both the in the in this picture. So, geosynthetics in groins. So, naturally regenerates this is a, the top one is porous groin system and the down one is a, the dune fencing. When you have large dunes it can be wind blown the dunes disappear in process. So, for that if you have a, something like groins as shown above look at the way the waves are coming and these are some kind of a jetting into like this. So, naturally regenerates a beach width reduces the wave energy in the near shore produces structural storm protection. Accumulates a, in the case of a dune, dune a, a fencing accumulates wind blown sand builds protective dunes provides structural storm protection. So, this is how it looks it looks see a series of grinds so geosynthetic grinds series of removable and adjustable porous structures that extend perpendicular to the shoreline the pictures are uh, clear the individual groin screens are designed to be periodically raised system is quite reusable all recovered sand is natural. So, these are all the concepts available this has not been tried in India nowhere it has been tried, but concepts do exist and it is left to us to consider them and these are all net grinds that has been used in Florida. Then these are all subsurface dune protection. So, you look at the geotubes here you can just go into the Google and then try to look into uh, look into the details all the complete details are available. So, here you see that a number of geotubes are formed in order to have a, a protection like this. So, what could be planned also is have geotubes as you have seen and also run a geomat and geomat will help in flourishing the plants as I have said earlier. So, this yet another picture sand dune protection yet another picture on 
the application of geotubes look at this how the whole thing has been protected. After having the geotube then you can have a greenery over it, it is possible to have that. So let us move into geotextiles, application of geotextiles in revetment. These are used as filters to replace granular layers. Primary armor can be dumped, can be dumped rock or concrete blocks or wire, uh, uh, wire mattress or gabions. So this is how it looks like you have a the geotextile running through the red color, over it we have the under layer or the filter layers etc and then the primary layer. Make sure that the textile is anchored properly at both ends at the crest elevation and near the toe. As I said earlier preparation of geotextile is extremely important, wrinkle free and overlapping. So once this is done, so you see here woven geotextile is used in this case. So once it is laid and checked properly then they start putting in the filter layer. So geosynthetics in dikes, dikes can be of uh, for flood protection, containment, spur dikes, underwater dikes, dike breach repair etc. In all these cases you can use geosynthetics. For example, here are some of the examples. This is somewhere in Bahrain where they have used uh, the geotube here to retain this earth at the same time resist the action from the water side. Yet another condition of coastal protection here. So this is a dike wherein you have a geotube, the elevation of the dike has gone up because of this and you see that this is going to protect the land side this is going to protect the land side and the elevation can be appropriately fixed. So inundation is avoided by this kind of a concept. Now we move on to geobags as well as uh, I am trying to combine all these things together. So here you see that geotextile bags can also perform the function of a geotube. On the left side you see a number of geobags. All said and done although it acts as a protection measure, experience has shown that it can serve only as a short term solution. Maybe if you are interested in uh, as a, an emergency measure for a short term uh, duration, you can go in for the job acts as coastal protection measure. So this is uh, adopted for the bank protection. So bank protection is going on. So you see the geotextiles already laid on the sides, the side has to be prepared, there should not be much of undulations. If you have too much of undulations then you see that unevenness can lead to, uh, lead to tearing of uh, uh, geotextile over some time later and now look at uh, after it has been installed. This is island of Zilt, 
where a cliff protection cliff is protected with geosynthetic materials as you can see here. So, this is the kind of a setback line for these properties that has been thought of. We now move on to some of the projects that has been executed using geosynthetics in India. One is the geo bags that was adopted in Ullal. This is in Mangalore, south of old Mangalore port, where on the left hand side you see the vanishing of a rubble mount sea wall. The rubble mount sea wall is completely gone in this case and it is a coastal community and you need to protect the lives as well as the property. On a war footing they have adopted geo bags, but these geo bags can serve only for a short duration and it has served its purpose and now there are some other measures which are being planned and again it is being discussed about geosynthetic application for protecting this coast. Next, we will uh, look at one of the most uh, interesting projects carried out by CWPRS, wherein this uh, concerns beach protection at Tital. The location is indicated in this map and the protection is to be done for Swami Narayan temple. The beach protection that is to be done is for this kind of a scenario. So, you can see the kind of erosion that has taken place. The erosion is almost like vertical cuts and this needs to be protected. The site conditions are severely affected over a beach length of about 350 meters. The beach slope was measured to be ranging between 1 is to 15 to 1 is to 30. Beach material consists of fine silt and fine sand. High water line is plus 4.5 meters, low water line is 0, 0. Maximum beach width available between high tide and low tide, high water line and the low water line is 500 meters. The find availability of the 500 meters is very advantageous. This is one, uh, one important uh, aspect which need to be considered when you are planning for a coastal protection measure. At several locations, the distance between the high tide and the low tide line will be only of the order of very few meters. So, in which case kind of a sea wall becomes very difficult to be implemented. So, maximum breaking wave height expected was around 2 meters. With these design particulars, the design adopted was going in for flexible gabions. As I said gabions are filled with nets and handled. So, the filling and handling will be only in on site. So, there is the need for handling huge rocks and for its transportation from quarry to the site is avoided thereby so much of loss is avoided I mean damage to the highway etcetera are avoided. And it is also quite easy handling the flexible gabion boxes. 
So, this was modified this was the original design and then it was modified as indicated this shows the red line shows the profile eroding profile and they modified the cross section and this was the kind of solution. So, they used the polymer rope gabions. The construction is in progress wherein you see those gabions being installed and this is the seaside. So, this is the seaside the construction has started and now it is still in progress. Now, it is part completed now completed after the beach protection completed sea wall running for about 300 meters. This is as of now this is how it looks like. This shows a movie of this location the Swami Narayan temple at Tittal being protected by the Gabians. It also shows the construction sequences going on and the kind of problems that were faced when the construction was going on even during a this kind of a scenario the construction was in progress. So, is that clear? So, that was only a short clip video clip of the Tithal. Then we move on to Gujarat. So, this was the disturbed shoreline. So, now you see the geotextile. So, this is the sectional view and you have the complete cross section shown here in this part. Okay. So, this is a perfect and it is understood that it is intact. So, I will stop here.